Microsoft South Central U.S. data center outage takes down a number of cloud services, but I actually like the headline from the register better. Of course, they always have great headlines. Thunderstruck, Azure back in black out after voltage causes flick the switch. So in short, what happened here? A lightning storm shook Texas facility all night long. I just, I got to admit, I love that line. But uh, here we are almost 24 hours later. This is the um, refreshes. So we've got the latest page right here. All right. This is the Azure status as of Wednesday, September 5th at 8.44 a.m. And we're still having warnings on here, which is better than an outage. Uh, they're still working on restoring services. But the, we've seen some failures in redundancy. And I thought this was kind of interesting. And I believe it could be related to this and this, some of the application insight that's done. What we've seen was Office 365 fail, which affected a lot of our clients. People couldn't log in. And it was kind of a mess. So definitely crazy when this happens because there's not really, when you're dependent on Office 365 and email and everything else, there's not a plan B for that. So it's feeling the interesting effects of the cloud. And what I figured I'd do here was talk a little bit about the data center. So 5150 Rogers Road in San Antonio, Texas is where this big giant data center resides. Um, I found the information on here. Apparently it's 477,000 square feet according to uh, this article here. Uh, I didn't measure. It's definitely big. I kind of like how it's nondescript. There's nothing more than an address in the building. Uh, we pull back a little bit here to look at the data center itself. It's big. And I don't know why it says Chrysler Group on it. Um, that maybe is some management company that manages the property. I don't know. Uh, but this is 5150 Rogers, and it's quite a big facility, so it is definitely huge. And apparently what happened was, uh, with any large data center, the cooling towers, which they have some on this end and some on this end here, I'm guessing, and uh, they are not always super open about what goes on inside these, but this probably cools this side of the data center and this cools that side. But the problem wasn't like a power outage. The problem was related to the cooling system being taken offline, and they didn't want the servers to melt. Servers will melt and just destroy themselves if they don't have proper cooling. And if you haven't ever been in a data center, the noise in them is a little bit loud, and most of what you're hearing, you hear all the fans and whatnot in the servers, but you are really hearing a whole lot of uh, the cooling system going to try to remove all the heat as these systems generated. It's always the trouble with uh, big servers and data centers like this. But it just had me thinking a lot about the lack of redundancy we have and the, uh, to use the phrase, too big to fail, it's it worrisome when they didn't have a smooth transition for the Office 365. Now, I get it. If you're hosting your own app inside of Azure and you want redundancy, you host that app in another data center, either another company or another piece of Microsoft, so you have geographical redundance in case anything goes down. That's part of the design. What worries me is that Microsoft had so much authentication being affected when one data center goes down, and they have numerous ones. So when you look at the Azure status page, you know, we've got East, East US2, Central, North, South Central, which is the Texas facility in question here, West Central, West US, uh, Canada East, Canada Central, Brazil South. They have a lot of data centers here in the Americas. And then we have the Azure government ones, Azure Pacific, and then the Europe ones. So there's a lot. And I noticed that this application insights, and I'm not an Azure expert, so I'm not exactly sure what all application insights does. But I know, I, I mean, I read the blurb here. It's actionable insights through application performance management, but that appears to be affected throughout from Europe to there. So what I'm surmising here, and I'm hoping there's a better debrief from Microsoft. So I like when companies give us a, this is what went wrong. And the infamous several years ago, playbook failure at Azure, or I'm sorry, at AWS, when basically someone had uh, typed something and it was not filtered. So instead of say, we're going to take down 10 servers, we added a zero, we took down 100 and took down some of the systems over there. So it's really interesting uh, to think about the scale and size when you talk about a 477,000 square foot data center, and this is one, and then our reliance on these things, so many companies using it and relying on it, and you are disrupting a businesses. You're disrupting the flow of business because we've become critically 
attached to these systems, we don't always have a plan B to work without them. Uh, so it's still interesting. It's still something to think about. It's, you know, a pain. We mostly are, you know, we're a small company, so we're using a lot of self-hosted stuff, but we do use G Suite. So if G Suite were to go down, we would certainly be very uh, lost in terms of being able to send emails, which is one of our primary communication systems. And that's how a lot of our clients that are using Office 365 were. They were just stuck. They are like, well, it's down and we're down with it. Therefore, insurance quotes can't go out. Processes can't be done. Billing can't be done. There's just a, a plethora of things that go down. So it's a lot to think about. It's one of those, you know, I'm hoping we get a really good debrief from them other than it exploded at a data center from a lightning strike. But nonetheless, uh, it's definitely something to think about when you're building your redundancy plans, how you uh, deal with it. And it's probably a good idea to at least have some process in place. Obviously, if you're dependent on Office 365 for email, you can't send emails. What are you going to do instead? What's your process for contacting your teams? What's your con process for what your staff is going to do instead? So that's a little bit of thinking and planning that people should have because there's this big assumption of this giant cloud server won't go down and it's redundant across multiple regions. But uh, we still seem to have a single point of failure. This went down and took out things with it that people are very dependent on. So uh, still interesting. It's still it's almost 24 hours later and they're still just feeling the recovery. So this is this happened in roughly, I think it was on 10 a.m. yesterday and it's 8.50 a.m. today. And you know, like I said, things are getting better, but boy, this is taking a long time to restore and making people hopefully wake up and think a little bit more about this and hopefully have a plan B. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.